today, which is improve client relationships and foster loyalty. Sounds very promising. Or the importance of delivering personalized, dynamic customer engagement. Together with me on stage today, I have once again Natalia Andrychuk, the co-founder and CEO of V7, and Pavel Klemenko, the head of Omnichannel Excellence at V7. To both of you, how are you, Pavel and Natalia? Thanks. Always great fine. on my side, Pavel. Yeah, yeah, everything is fine. Fantastic. Looking so forward. looking forward to the conversation. The stage is all yours, and I will rejoin once uh, again when we will collect some audience questions. So thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Uh, okay, colleagues, so I think we're talking about the uh, personalized engagement and dynamic content, all, all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we can jump really to uh, some uh, discussion regarding this. Uh, and I think that the first um, point here is that it's worth mentioning, actually, uh, that it seems a little bit like uh, not so counterintuitive and sometimes like a paradox. But in order really to bring this personalized experience, you need to some uh, standardization. Uh, you really need to uh, create this uh, content up front, some assets and some modules, yeah, tag them properly. So after that, just within the uh, 10 minutes or so, I will uh, give you uh, the, my presentation regarding the uh, content and uh, campaign taxonomy. But really the core stuff here is order, in order to, um, to be more personalized, you need to bring this standardization uh, at the backstage. Yeah, this housekeeping sounds to be very important. And I believe like many of our clients and clients to be they engaged in this activity and like they understand like today implementing the digital asset management tool, one of the key factors, how you need to start. So you need to make sure like you, you, you have to be sure how you store your content, what is the format and uh, taxonomy and uh, tagging architecture in place. I think today it is a um, very manual or rather manual um, exercise, right? So um, uh, what, what we can see today, like there are a lot of librarians, even if the, the uh, strategy, the taxonomy strategy is designed. So there is a lot of manual work and this work is like continuous work because there is not uh, a visible ending of the story, right? Right, this team is going to to bring in new and new elements and being structured all the time, so it's continuous work. But Pavel, due to your experience, I think like we have discussed it many times. Do you see uh, any house in some near future this? Um, uh, I would say, uh, dynamic tagging perspective, because we all right today investing the enormous resource in structuring the data, creating the uh, uh, tagging architecture, connecting uh, 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 Viva Vault promo mats with uh, uh, offering tools, this like a wizard and the others. And we are hoping that this is the only a pre-play, like we are doing this housekeeping, but somewhere in the future, the dynamic tagging will happen. What do you think about this idea? Is it very interesting, I think? Yeah, uh, sure, it will move uh, totally in this direction. Uh, so currently, a company is trying to work more or less manually with uh, on the asset level. And of course, for everyone, it's like uh, more or less understandable that if you even go more granular, to the modules level. So it will multiply the amount, the contents that you need to work with, that you need to manage. And if you multiply in this uh, content pieces uh, and uh, from time, from the uh, long period of time, you get in thousands of these pieces. It's even within big team, it's impossible to manage this manually. So manually, it will be like a disaster and uh, even if you're trying to pay attention, like uh, put some people who will be in charge in, in, in deciding, yes, for these users, we need to put this uh, this module, for this user, we need to put this asset, it will not work. You will, uh, you will absolutely will be in chaos on this stuff. So you will need, you need to 
invest some time and and resources up front in order to build system, holistic system, integrated system. When you call, when you have this market automation tool, when you have the uh, dumb system like Promomats, yeah, when you have the CRM platform, all that integrated has this yeah, taxonomy in place, processes in place, and after that it could it could scale. You could yeah. work with any kind of uh, quantity of these assets. Yeah, but do you mean like, you know, uh, once we have in upstream of the content creation, whenever we have like thousands of agencies downloading the data into the uh, digital asset management tool, let us say one of the most uh, popular and prosperous today uh, vault. So we are downloading there, they are uploading there the assets. That means that with the technology as like we are at the seven one of these uh, technology providers who are fighting, obviously, for this particular role, um, that our system will grab the assets and according to the um, uh, strategy and the architecture of the tagging, which is placed by the company, the system will tag the asset appropriately and then there will be not so much uh, uh, human involved work because like we uh, uh, see we need to uh, make sure like the offering tool understands the system of tagging and is able with uh, I don't know uh, uh, with the uh, data recognition with the artificial intelligence to take to tag the content according to the uh, structure which was provided otherwise otherwise it, it will remain always a huge manual effort what do you think yeah i think definitely the algorithms will take their place uh so i think it, at least in some midterm perspective it will be like uh joint forces so mm -hmm. machines and algorithms should do the work that they're capable of and the people with the man manual part really um, should uh, should like uh, stay with some more like strategic review, understanding the goals. Because at any 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 different point of time, machine machine will not fully understand the goal, the strategic efforts that you're trying to put there. So someone who is responsible for the goal setting for the creating the system will will do his work. And leave the machines do uh, it work in sense of some what is really uh, um, pictured on this uh, on this uh, separate banner. Yeah, what is the, like uh, some additional text that machine could add in order for you to classify it easily, to uh, arrange it easily, and to pick up easily. And also, what additionally machine can do, machine can give you the and algorithms can give you the this vision on. Uh, uh, on the level aggregating the data as uh, the data on the level of each user so if you see uh that the, this kind of this particular user is uh, more uh algorithm sees it more involved in this kind of content yeah of course it can give you this correlation this linkage that this kind of item this kind of module is more preferred by this particular user yeah. so in future yeah machine can advise you or uh, edit uh, this uh, module automatically for this particular user because yeah. previously algorithms saw that this user prefers this kind of content that he is uh, uh, so for example when we're talking about some brands or some therapeutic area yeah so the algorithm will see this chain of engagement so the user is prefer this kind of stuff he prefers uh, emotional content uh, about this therapeutic area, you know, like diabetes, mm -hmm. oncology, so machine will add it. So if this align with your strategy and you uh, on the high level the vision uh, someone uh, from the from the company side, yeah, understand that it's okay for us to provide the information about diabetes or about the oncology, it's fine. Or you can put some exceptions that no, we don't want to uh, to show to promote this uh, emotional content for the diabetes. So you will have this strategic vision and let the machine do its work. Yeah, it sounds like for me it sounds uh, really like uh, our. 
uh, foreseen future, right? Because we we all are going over there. So building the offering tools, connecting to digital asset management systems, making sure like all downstream systems are connected as well. So like I think there are a lot of uh, hurdles today on uh, uh, personalization question. Uh, what do you think uh, would be the checklist from your side? Because I have started with the very high level checklist, this conversation. Do you have the checklist from your side, uh, what uh, uh, the beginners must follow, let's say? Yeah, to begin uh, the in sense of personalization, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so first of all, of course, uh, the first thing that you need to work on is data. You need to really understand where is the data, about your your database uh, data about the engagement so where you store it and how you um, transfer it across your ecosystem so once again there is always these three pillars as we discussed here previously market automation platform digital asset management uh, platform tool or services yeah whatever you're using uh, and uh, CRM platform in most cases yeah that's yeah. crucial for pharma so you need to make sure the data is circling across the ecosystem that it's uh, available for all these platforms to use. So after that, really, you need to put some system on tagging taxonomy, on your campaign um, process of work, yeah, some system how you uh, arrange it and how you work with it. And after that, yet create some roadmap. Uh, so in, in general, it seems a little bit uh, huge and not so feasible. But if you divide it in stages, it could be way more feasible and not so scary. So eat this elephant piece by piece. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Today we are starting with some more simple um, personalization approach. Yeah. With some asset level uh, and some simple campaigns with a couple of channels. Yeah. Ne next and uh, the next stage we're going into um, modular into some additional channels uh, and uh, taking this next step. Uh, next way, uh, you go into the more complex channel, uh, more complex journeys and uh, adding more sophisticated personalization. So you, you should not, from the very beginning, personalize everything. Just start with some, some uh, more basic personalization uh, and move it yeah, slowly, step by step. And eventually, after some time, like within one year or so, you could potentially go with the, uh, uh, stay with a fully uh, modular approach, fully dynamically created assets. That that when there is only the template is provided mm -hmm. to and approve it um, on the corporate level, and after that all this content pieces inside, built fully dynamically, mainly supported by the uh, platforms and algorithms. All data is circulating. And you just you, you just to check, approve it, and uh, constantly worked on it so it seems a little bit um, frustrating maybe for someone but it's feasible you just need to start and create the roadmap for be for be there and but in order to be there in a year you need to start doing something today yeah, uh, I, I think I think so. Like the most scary part is like that it is a lengthy process, right? It is a lengthy process, but it is an evolution. I have met many people who were um, who were scared and uh, by the uh, task how to merge the uh, in field activities with the digital activities, right? The data, how to get these, uh, how to get these uh, mutual values from merging those activities activities how to, to how to bring like because the, because the uh, this is how uh, this is how my perception was working a couple of years ago uh, uh, hearing omni channel i was immediately imagining like uh, online channels mostly staying apart with this our human to human interaction and all of these activities right so that was uh, my perception right now i <laughs> All of us are having, um, like nearly all of us are having the very same, um, I would say, uh, question, open question, where we are merging this these two walls, this digital and uh, uh, human to human. So, uh, at, uh, in my opinion, this is a very uh, difficult task with a lot of, you know, with the, it's not only on the level of data, it's also on the level 
of values on the inside. So how you can treat those insights, how you can build on those, right? And uh, from your experience, uh, what do you think about the uh, biggest traps into that direction? Because this direction is uh, uh, one of the most desirable today, how to merge these two. Yeah. It's not actually this not not a secret for everyone that there is in all pharma companies there is always this is gap between digital activities and physical world medical representative yeah so uh, all this uh, all pharma companies thinking about how to close to how to bridge this gap but someone is doing something more something someone is doing less but still yeah so first of all it's a question as I said before about the data. And the funny thing that we saw from uh, from our practice that when we started to really bridging this gap on the technical part, on data part, on the um, uh, taxonomy and content part, we uh, we saw that the colleagues from pharma company uh, who is responsible for the field force effectiveness from one hand and from the digital campaign managers like MC leads and digital leads from other side, they started to collaborate. They started to talk each other because before that they was a little bit apart. Uh, so one is responsible for their part of work and planning uh, accordingly. Other uh, group is responsible for the digital uh, content, digital um, campaigns and plans according. But in most cases, they are like joining uh, in some meetings with some like cycle planning or so. But in many cases, they are a little bit apart. And yeah, this, yeah. Can we say it? Because that gets between us. Starting to, start, start to play in, starting to really communicate it, and this communication is also helping to bridge uh, this gap. And when you really uh, transfer this data, and from one perspective, given in CRM, in the timeline, adding these additional activities that is occurring in um, market emission platforms, what really is happening? Uh, in these digital campaigns and make it visible in timeline, in HCP timeline in um, uh, CRM platform, what is going on there and vice versa, yeah, transferring this data about the field uh, face-to-face visits, um, uh, virtual uh, visits, yeah, uh, virtual meetings and uh, any kind of this approved emails, so any uh, activities that is doing, uh, done by the reps in market automation platform and taking it to account when you plan in this journey it's really after that is starting to work because omnichannel is not about uh, bringing together all digital channels it's yeah. bringing all channels all and channels. Uh, uh, field force activities is also like one of the part of this uh, bigger omnichannel pictures and there is also some additional constraints that we saw that uh it's really common for many pharma companies when they try started to to do something and to promote it uh, f- for the field force. The field force has its natural like fear. We are trying to replace them with uh, these soulless machines, the algorithm. They will lose uh, lost their job and so on. So of course, no. As we as we said previously, uh, let algorithms do their job and let humans do their job. So no one will replace a medical representative in some upcoming future. It's still human connections. We're all humans. We would like to communicate with humans. So we'd like also to see uh, each other uh, physically. We also uh, have this like human connection and so on. So the idea is really to extend, to weaponize we want um, field force, to give them, the, uh, them additional capabilities. So just one example, what uh, we are doing in order to bring this gap, we create in this red trigger journeys. When we create a journey in market automation platform, and after that, sharing the journey, technically it's uh, uh, feasible, to, uh, to CRM, to medical representative, in order to give to them this power, this authority to decide whom to enroll and when exactly to enroll and see what is going on within this journey after that. And once again, so medical representative can choose um, which uh, which uh, template, for example, use in this particular case. Uh, can even bring some uh, some his words in some this part, some tokens here here. But after that, we can uh, we can uh, additionally uh, empower them 
by these algorithms and uh, make these algorithms add some additional blocks, modules in this content, approve the mail. Yeah. Okay, we can, uh, we can uh, talk, uh, here I'm talking about the same for the e-detail and here to really adjust to existing uh, HTTP profile. That's 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 really true. Like uh, talking about the human to human um, uh, interaction, and um, like I think uh, what would be remarkable to say here. So uh, about one more secret, uh, like uh, to start the omni-channel journey, we always need to keep an eye to build the internal experience inside organization. So I know like many companies try to outsource and give away the uh, this job to some agencies completely, 100%. But I can see also a very good tendency here that when... Uh, today, many companies trying to build internally the uh, uh, great experience, omnichannel experience, and uh, even uh, despite it needs the internal capacity, it's always good to partner with the agency, like our agency always partnering with our customers by sharing our experience where we can like launch your omnichannel operations and then build this uh, capability for you in-house. So means like share these basics and these secrets we are talking about today with Pavel and hopefully my colleagues will be joining very soon. So uh, we are helping to share that and we are training your staff to make sure they are capable to, uh, to lead the journeys on their own in the next uh, 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 timeline slots where they uh, will be due. So that's, that's uh, how the uh, real partnership works and what we we are building together with our client and we are this is one of the secrets how to obtain the great omnichannel experiences to obtain the great partner right so this is what i want to say good so yeah, yeah. it's really true so it's, it's just by by nature yes that uh, no one will know product better than the company itself but uh company even the best one could not uh, have all experience from all pharma companies, yeah. But when agencies naturally working with many companies and absorbing experience from many different companies, from many different cases, so it's one of the uh, natural advantages of the of the uh, any kind of good agency. Exactly, exactly. I see Dara joined. You want to interrupt our slight conversation, right? Exactly. Yeah, remind us about very the time. Sad, very sad to interrupt because uh, the conversation was really very nice. Uh, I'm here for taking the audience questions because we received a couple of private questions, uh, some people who messaged me privately, and we also received some general questions on the comment section here. So I will pick some of those. And my first question, which comes from Jens, is what would the future look like in terms of tasks that stay manual with automated for the librarian? Jens is wondering. Yeah, so it's, we think we, we slightly uh, touched uh, previously the, the future, so it will be like this joining forces between the um, manual and automated. And uh, to just once again to emphasize, I think uh, so uh, librarians, yeah, it should should be there. So it's some um, some role that is responsible really for the for the whole system, for the whole data, to make sure that everything is correct. So there is no like mistakes. So that there is no like uh, everything is in the, in the right place. It's still there, but with the time is um, moving forward for the future, the more uh, the more content pieces we will create, the more this operational work should be done by some algorithms, and human uh, humans should be in charge of the system of the approach. Yeah, how really to correct the the whole um, the whole ecosystem? What to add there? Uh, is it the right direction? Are we matching our goals? Yeah, really to to support this kind of idea in different levels. Yeah, on the level of management, what we're trying to achieve, guys, in general, what we're trying to achieve. Why we're we communicating to uh, to this uh, to our audience to HCP? What we're trying to bring there. What more strategic level. It's yes, more strategic level. level. And the, the yeah. 
The, his role will become more strategic and uh, from my perspective he will be also the keeper of the governance because like uh, the the governance creative uh, created around tagging and taxonomy and any change it will uh, it will impact the algorithm as well so the role of the librarian will be more high level as a keeper of the strategy as the strategic one like uh, Pavel is saying with the, all this, um, uh, why we are doing this, w what to do next, uh, plus the governance keeper, if there's some change, so the change should be implemented uh, in many levels to be automated again. So this is my thinking. Sorry for interruption. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So we are left with two more minutes for this particular session. Uh, a private question which I received, which uh, I think is quite interesting is, what is personalized dynamic customer engagement and why is it important? Natalia, maybe we can start with you this time. Uh, what is the person? Uh... What is personalized dynamic customer engagements and why is it important? Okay. Uh... Yes, so this uh, this is a very uh, you know this is a very good question about personalized customer engagement and dynamic. So, so uh, I think in this question there is a paradox somewhere because uh, if we say personal engagement, it means very personal about us, and then if we say dynamic, it means somewhere it will be automated, right? So we want to automate something personal about us, uh, which is which we like, which we like to receive, but. This is this is what is happening today because all of our personal choices are automated today, not in pharma, in other industries. When we are in um, some, uh, uh, I don't know, Netflix or whatever other commercial institution we are using, right? So we are our personal experience is highly automated and it is dynamic because um, you uh, we always experience um, the thing once uh, our personal choices on the networking on the uh, on the uh, commercial platform where we buy something then are impacting the things we see and um, um, this kind of experience in commercial sphere, why it is important that it will grab our um, uh, like uh, our health, our healthcare? Why? Because once we are talk about pharmaceutical world, we want these to to, to grab this um, on the personal level about our health. This is important because we are not remembering all the personal data we should remember as human beings. Like we even sometimes or very often we forget about medication we need to take regularly. We we can forget about some uh, needed routine health check we need to provide. That means this personal care at, at some point has to be dynamic so and it has to be impacted by the uh, factors which will be uh, which could be like visit to our doctor or prescri or uh, getting the prescribed medicine with uh, this area of events could trigger this automatic this automation which will impact our personal experience with pharma that means we will be consuming the medication without taking care that we need to remember that maybe it will be some kind of chip or the bracelet or whatever we will need for that but uh, um, instead of uh, I don't know instead of uh, uh, having the special dictionary for the hospital visits whatever we have for the health check some application so we will need to have just only one interface for our human healthcare system where everything dynamically will be about us. But this is far away world, I, but I really like people who are connecting meta work and their work with the healthcare systems and our future and uh, really like to read about that. And this is important because this future, we want or not, it will happen to us and uh, with pharma and with what we are doing today so we are taking care about our health about our well-being and 
if we will be living in that new world where everything about the data automation we have to be sure like the one of the most precious thing in our life which is health and really life is well taken care of this is my opinion thanks a lot natalia pavel so the time is over for this interesting session we are moving forward to Pavel's uh, session or presentation from zero to hero. I always wanted to be a superhero, but I guess <laughs> Pavel figured out how to be a superhero when it comes to content. So, Natalia, thanks a lot. And uh, Pavel, we are staying uh, in the meeting. Yeah. Uh, hearing you very Thank soon. Thank you.